Hello, my name is Hélène Sanfasson, and I'm a research scientist here at the Summerland Research and Development Centre. My specialty is plant virology, and I have been working with plant viruses that infect fruit trees for most of my career. Today, I'm going to discuss with you our results uh, in co conjunction with a large multidisciplinary project on understanding the causes of rapid apple decline disease, also referred to as sudden apple decline. Uh, this is a complex disease that uh, emerged in uh, BC and also uh, in other apple growing region in Canada and in the USA. Um, we don't completely understand the cause of this disease and our role in this project was to understand the contribution of viruses to disease emergence and severity. And uh, I have a picture here of apple trees, one affected by rapid apple decline and another one that is apparently healthy. So it's a very devastating disease. Before I start getting into the results of our study, I wanted to discuss briefly methods to identify plant viruses. Um, standard diagnostic tests are done using methods such as RT-PCR. Uh, they are easy, rapid, not very expensive, and many samples can be processed together. But each virus must be tested one by one, and only known viruses can be tested. So you need to know enough of its genome sequence so that you can design the test. On the other hand, high throughput sequencing, also referred to as next generation sequencing or deep sequencing, allows us to simultaneously identify all viruses present in a sample. And what's even better is that we don't need to know ahead of time what those viruses are. The method can identify new viruses or new virus strains. However, it is more expensive, more time consuming, and definitely not suited for a very large number of samples. So when we started the project uh, in 2019, we decided to start with high throughput sequencing to see what viruses were present in BC apple orchards. And I'm showing a picture here of Hogan Shao from my lab, who did all the work um, in uh, collecting samples and analyzing them. So all the work I'm going to describe was uh, basically done by uh, Hogan. So uh, we collected leaves from diseased trees or from trees that looked healthy. And we did this in apple orchards in Summerland in the Okanagan Valley and in Coston, a little bit less, but a little bit in Coston in the Similkameen Valley. And we did this over two consecutive growing seasons, 2019 and 2020. We would have liked to sequence to collect samples a little bit wider, but we couldn't. This was the middle of the pandemic and we had obvious travel restrictions. However, we made sure that when we sampled, we covered a large range of cyan and rootstock varieties, hoping to get good insights in the variety of viruses that are present in the region. We detected 21 previously known viruses and one previously known viroid. And we also detected a new virus, which we named Apple Arlar virus 2, and we characterized its entire genome sequence. We then use RT-PCR to look at the incidence of the different viruses that we detected by high throughput sequencing. We tested 148 individual samples, and we looked at the incidence of the 12 main viruses and one viroid. What we found is that most of the trees were infected by at least one viruses, whether the tree looked healthy or infected. And the majority of trees were infected by more than one virus. In fact, we found up to eight different viruses in a single tree. We then looked at the most abundant viruses, and it was this new virus, Apple Arla virus 2, which was present in the uh, most samples. In addition, we also detected in relatively high incidence 
other viruses which had been previously described from neighboring apple growing area. So this was not necessarily a big surprise. So the conclusion of the, of the study was that the apple virome is complex. Apple trees are infected by many diverse viruses. And most of the viruses we detected were previously identified in other apple growing regions. We detected one new virus in the Okanagan Valley, and with our collaborator investigated whether it was also present in the Crescent Valley in BC or in Ontario. Those were limited studies. They did not find it. Uh, perhaps we haven't looked in, uh, hard enough yet. I have to mention that even though it's a new virus, we don't know what the impact of this virus is on the health of the tree. Possibly it's just a latent virus that doesn't do much, or it could have a more severe impact. We need to look into this more closely. There was no clear association between the presence of a single virus or combination of virus and rapid apple decline symptoms. That means that whether the uh, tree looked healthy or, as, uh, or it had severe symptoms, we did find essentially the same types of viruses. This does not mean that the virus do not contribute to the disease. They might contribute to disease severity, but we need to do more work to figure this out. All this work has been published, and if you want more detail, you can see our publication. So uh, where do we go from here? Um, we, we now have new funding that was recently secured for a large Canada-wide viral vigilance project that will be starting in April 2024. The project will include researchers from Agriculture Canada and Agri-Food Canada in BC, Ontario, Quebec and Nova Scotia, as well as collaborators from CFIA and International Academic Institute. We will look at the diversity of viruses in major horticultural crops, including apple. But we will look at this at the agroecosystem level that means that we will not only sample the crop in question, but we will also sample neighboring weed species because they might act as reservoirs for virus infection. And our team, we will continue the characterization of the apple virome, and we hope to expand our previous observation to other regions of BC and with the help of our collaborators to other provinces in Canada. And I'm not going to end this uh, presentation without acknowledging the people that did the work. I already mentioned Hogan Shao, who, who really did most of the work. Wen Hao and Gavin Storoshuk were two co-op students that worked with Hogan. Uh, they did a lot of the RT-PCR test. Jesse McDonald was a tremendous help in coordinating the sampling in co commercial orchards. Um, I also want to thank my colleagues from uh, the Summerland Research and Development Center, Tom Forge, Kirsten Hannam, Amrit Singh, and Hao Xu, for granting us access to their research orchards for uh, leaf sampling. I big thank also to apple growers of the Okanagan and Similkameen Valley for letting us sample in their commercial orchard and to Mike Roth from CFIA for help with sequence analysis. And uh, I will end by directing you to our list of collaborators for the ongoing project. And uh, we're really looking forward to uh, seeing what's there in other regions, uh, apple growing regions, what has changed, what is the same. Is this new virus still there? Is, has it expanded to other regions? Stay tuned. Okay, I thank you for your attention.